My name is Jasmine and I am a Mennonite. Last year for Mennonite Heritage Week, I made a few videos demonstrating on how to make a couple foods from my cultural background. I had so much fun with it last year and I just wanted to do it again. Today, I'm going to show you how to make one of my family's favorite meals. It's called Vranikia. It's traditionally served with rootvarsh and schmonfat. Vranikia is a low German word for a food that would be best described as cottage cheese filled pierogies. Schmonfat is a type of gravy that would be directly translated as cream fat because it is made with cream and fat drippings from sausage called Rückwärsch. Rückwärsch is a mild smoked sausage commonly eaten among Mennonites all across Canada. In the past, my family has made our own Rückwärsch, but today my dad bought it from the Mexican Mini Mart in Tilbury. Now, I know what you might be thinking. Pierogies and sausage sounds like a Ukrainian or a Russian food. So why would we have to buy our sausage at the Mexican store? Well, there's a very good explanation for that. So, a lot of the Mexican stores in our area are owned and operated by people called the Mexican Mennonites. So the question is, how did the Mennonites get to Mexico? Well, in the late 1800s, early 1900s, my ancestors fled from persecution in what is now called Ukraine and Russia and came to Canada. After settling in Canada, the government made changes to the education system that many Mennonites feared would result in the loss of their language and culture. This fear was so significant that many Mennonites moved from Canada to Mexico. Since then, many Mexican Mennonites have moved back to Canada, including my dad's grandparents, and this explains why we buy our Mennonite sausage at the Mexican store. So, let's get started! Today we're going to use the Vranke recipe on page 90 of Mennonite Girls Can Cook, published by Harold Press. Thank you to Amy Gingrich from Harold Press for letting us use this recipe in this cooking video today. So, because I have a big family and we love leftovers, I am going to be doing a double batch today. So, the first step is mixing up all of the dry ingredients. So, first we have one teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of baking powder, and four cups of flour. Now all we have to do is mix it up. Okay, now that the dry ingredients are all mixed up, we can add the wet ingredients. So I've got two egg whites and one cup of sour cream. And again, we just need to mix it up. Yeah, I definitely forgot to double the sour cream. It's definitely too dry. It's supposed to be two cups, not one cup. Just a note to anybody who's cooking, if you're going to double recipe, double everything. All right, so now I've got my other cup of sour cream. And I'm just gonna add this to here, and then we can start mixing properly again. So, my mom struggled for years on getting just the right Vranikia dough until she discovered, one, this cookbook, and two, that if you're going to use a KitchenAid, that if the dough gets a little bit too wet, that you slowly add flour into it while it's mixing until it stops sticking to the sides of the bowl. Then when the dough stops sticking to the sides of the bowl, you know you have just the right Vranikia dough. So let's stick it in the fridge to chill. Okay, so now that the dough is chilling, we are going to make our cottage cheese filling. 
We use a dry curd cottage cheese, so we will add that first. It says two cups in the recipe, so since we're doing a double, it will be four cups, so that is these two packages. Now we'll cut them open and put them in the bowl. Okay, so now that we've got the cottage cheese in the bowl, we need to add the egg yolks. So that was two egg yolks that we added. Again, the recipe just says one, but we doubled it. So um, next we are going to add the salt. So we've got two teaspoons here, and now we will add the pepper. This is half teaspoon right now. Just regular ground pepper and then we'll mix it up with a fork okay so now that we've got the cottage cheese all mixed up um, another thing we can do while we're waiting for the dough to cool is we can cut up the rückwärsch even though we're not going to fry it just yet it's something we can do to save time all right so now that our dough has chilled we can sprinkle our counter with some flour and roll it out and since this is a double recipe, we're only going to do half of the dough at a time. So now that the dough is rolled out, we're going to make the progis or the vranica. So we start by adding a spoonful of the cottage cheese and we just sort of set it, just, we'll make a row of these, so we just have the spoonful, and then you fold it over, but since it might have trouble sticking, we have a little bit of water that we add around it so that it'll stick better. And then we take a cup and just sort of cut it around so that we have our frenicia, our progi. And then we just have to make sure it's sealed so that when we cook it later it won't break. And then we'll just repeat these steps until we've used up all the dough. All right, so now that we have made all of our vranikia, we can start putting them in the pot and then boiling them. All right, now that we have the vranikia boiling, we can turn on the stove to start cooking the sausage. All right, so I've put water in there so that it's about a quarter of the way up the sausage so that well the water will slow down the cooking process so that it won't get overcooked on the outside and undercooked on the inside so how you know they're ready is they'll start floating to the top and then you will just spoon it out spoon one out and then just take it and Take a little bit of butter and sort of smear it on there and then just set it in a bowl with a strainer. Um, the reason why we put the butter on there is so that they don't stick together in the pile, otherwise it might get a little bit messy. So I'll just keep doing that until all of them are out and then we'll boil more. Okay, so now that they're starting to brown, we're gonna start flipping them so that they can brown on the other side. So 
this shouldn't take very long. Um, we can now turn off the stove and start putting them in our bowl. All right, so the grease left over in the pan from the rukwersh is what we will use to make our shmon fat or gravy. So first, I think we have to add the flour. We just sprinkle it over the bottom. Just not too much, but about that much. So we added just enough flour to cover the bottom and to soak up the grease. And then you can take a fork or a whisk and you just start sort of spreading it around or um, scraping up the grease from the bottom. So also you want to scrape all of the crumbs away from the sausage and it makes, it adds a great flavor to the gravy. Alright, so then we need to add the sour cream and milk. The recipe says a cup of sour cream and then we'll add about a cup of milk. So we'll just do a rough estimate. A little bit more. And now we'll turn the stove back on. Some people like to use uh, heavy cream, but we use a low-fat sour cream. Um, it's just a lot healthier that way. You also want to make sure you scrape off as much from the bottom as you can, just so it's a lot easier to clean later. And then you also get all of those crumbs from the sausage. So. I'm going to add a little bit of salt and then I'll have my dad test the saltiness after. So we'll just keep stirring until um, the gravy comes to a boil and then you know it's done. Alright, so I'm going to get a little bit on the spoon and have my dad Okay, he says it's good. No more salt needed. So now we've got our shmon fat. Well, after all that hard work, here it is. Frankia shmon fat and rukbarsh. Um, I also added some vegetables to the side. Um, if you wanted to be really adventurous and do it the very Mennonite way, you could add some strawberry jam on the Vranikia, and I'm not joking, it is very tasty, it seems weird, jam and gravy, but it's amazing. Um, well, I'm Jasmine, and I am a Mennonite, thank you for watching my video, and happy Mennonite Heritage Week!